Welcome to uh, The Recovering Politician. I am uh, getting ready to uh, head to Vegas tomorrow to play in my third uh, annual uh, World Series of Poker Tournament. And uh, I have uh, uh, some great uh, advisors, and one of them is with me today. Jim Fannin is uh, the world's leading mental fitness coach. He is uh, the coach to uh, many, many professional athletes, and as well as some professional poker players. And uh, he's here to share with me uh, and uh, my viewing audience some tips as we head off to Vegas. So, Jim, just kind of want to introduce yourself, but also introduce the, the idea of the zone that you've already taught me, but uh, want to give an overview to our, our, our viewers. Well, I, I'm, uh, I'm America's zone coach, and, uh, you know, the zone is something I've researched for 40 years. This is the 40th anniversary of discovering five markers uh, and I'm not using poker markers, uh, five <laughs> markers that uh, we all possess. And, and once these five markers are balanced at a high state, the phenomenon called the zone will arrive. And let me talk about the zone. You know, most people believe the zone is a mental state. In reality, it's a physical state. Now, it has tremendous mental attributes. But when these five markers of self-discipline, concentration, optimism, relaxation, and enjoyment, they're, all, they're in all of us. We have higher low levels of those at any time. These markers literally trigger a chemical or a group of chemicals in the brain, in the body, and they're released into the body. And when that happens, the eyes can double, maybe even triple shutter speed. And that'll give you the illusion that the poker scene is in slow motion, that the cards you're getting are in slow motion. But this is not limited to the superstar athlete or, or the great poker players. This is in everything. It's from a student taking a test. It's from a salesman making a sales call. It's making a presentation. It's in relationships. So you can be in this zone state in anything. The, the other thing that happens is before an event, typically if it's a big event, there's uh, butterflies. And the butterflies really is a positive. You have to think of butterflies as a beautiful thing like a butterfly literally is because your stomach constricts, diverts all the blood from your stomach to the brain for clarity and for the rest of the muscle groups for inordinate quickness, speed, agility, and, uh, and strength. Your skin sensitivity is heightened. Uh, your conscious mind, which has reasoning capabilities, judgment, even being a victim, it shuts down when you're in the zone. And your intuitive uh, mind, based on your subconscious, it takes over. And, and it scours the environment. It can even look into the hand of opposing poker players. Hmm. How uncanny is that? Yeah. So, and it'll whisper to you, uh, fold or double up your bet. It will tell you what to do. Now, most of us dismiss it. We explain it away. Uh, we don't always believe it. But once you tap into your intuition, uh, it's giving you real-time information that your conscious mind doesn't possess. So the key, once you're in that zone state, uh, of course, if you're aware you're in it, Jonathan, you're not in it any longer. So it's a fragile state of mind, but it has tremendous um, physical attributes of uh, giving you the feeling also that nothing can go wrong. So you have supreme confidence and you have trust. So here's the key to getting into the zone. The average person has two to 3,000 thoughts. You're not going to be in the zone. And if you overthink the situation for every thought on top of that 2,000, sometimes we have those crazy days where the tail's wagging the dog, 3,000, 4,000 thoughts, future, past, a little bit of present, but you're just going further and further away from a zone state. So a zone's like a mental airbag for trauma, but you don't have to have trauma to really attract it. That's the formula that I discovered 40 years ago. The SCORE, which is the acronym for those five markers, success system. And once you get into that zone state, you, you have 
30 to 40 percent less thoughts. And you'll eliminate going into the future uh, except to decide your next move. Now, and everything else, like you, you'll be detached from winning this tournament, for example. Yeah. You'll be in the task and in. And the past, well, it, it doesn't exist. Next, next, you know, that's your battle cry. You want to stay out of the past. That's where worry, anxiety, and negative stress, re stress reside. So uh, I want to help you get into the zone state so that you can be fully engrossed in the moment with all your faculties, even your fifth sense, uh, your sixth sense, rather, uh, to help you uh, make the right moves. You know, when we uh, we talked last year, you had just received an email from me. Uh, I had uh, let my uh, friends know that I was going back to the tournament. There was no way that I was going to do as well as I did uh, in 2012 when I made the final table. And and you called me and said, Jonathan, <laughs> you got to stop thinking that way. Uh, can you talk about how self-confidence is part of the zone and what I need to do to kind of lift myself back into that mode where I was two years ago? Yeah, optimism... Uh the O in score, it's literally, physically, uh, it's right in the heart of you. It, it's your belief system. And it's important that, you know, you believe you're going to do well, you've done well. But I, I will tell you that belief, Jonathan, is not enough. You, you can have faith all you want. The best in the world uh, up their optimism to a higher level. They expect to reach the final table. They expect that. Now, and I understand once you get into the final table, you know, luck, a lot of things can happen. But you need to expect it. And and there's some players that know they're going to be there. And that's a big differential between, oh, I believe I can do it, I've done it, I expect to do it, I know I can do it. And part of the optimism is trust. you got to trust is what I have enough? I trust me. What does that mean? Well, I trust me to fold. I mean, you may be folding 70% of your hands. Do I trust me to fold? Especially on the borderline hands where, you know, maybe I go in and see what's happening. Maybe I don't. But your intuition says fold. You better trust it and fold. And if it says go on that borderline, you need to trust it, you need to go in, you need to enter that hand. And if your mind is clear of the past and the future, and, and you're not thinking about winning, you're not thinking about losing, you're not thinking, you know, maybe I should be doing something else besides being here. If you can get in that clear mind, which I'm going to help you do, uh, the zone has a better chance of arriving and then it's, there's some tools we have to actually elongate the zone like a rubber band. Now, I, I've seen pro athletes get into it 30-some days. I mean locked, where they know, and they've set major records. So the, the zone typically, Jonathan, comes in bursts of 12 seconds. And I don't know why. I've researched the world, but my, my research has come back, not why it happens, but that it does happen. So uh, typically in one particular hand, uh, that's a 12-second thought process where you're going to be in the zone or you're not. And then you want to stretch it out to 12 times 12, a couple of minutes. Then you want to get it out to, to you know 20 minutes. Then you want to get it out over an hour. And then you want to go from table to table, day to day, and stretch the zone. And uh, again, the zone is like a a rubber band of staying in the moment, uh, only going to the future, what's my next move, and only going into the past to quickly ascertain why they moved where they moved, you know, what, why they did what they did. But if you let your subconscious do most of that calculation, instead of your experience or your logic, you're going to play better hands, better results, You'll get to the final table. And you have to have confidence that this process works. You have to have confidence that what I have is enough. I know what to do in every situation. And you have to have confidence that I won't tip my hand. And 
confidence that I can read what's going on. More importantly, than it physically tells, which, you know, I've mastered all the different tells, but even more important than that, because there's fake tells, as you know, to set you up. Intuition you can't hide. Yeah. So help, help me with some so of those. It, once you get in that zone state and have confidence, repeat that, please. Can you help me how uh, some of those cues to get in that zone set state that we talked again to remind me about uh, the hydration. I, I remember loosening my jaw. There were some other good things that really helped us. I, I, I think the first thing is you need to shut your eyes and unhinge your jaw right now and just clear your mind. Just turn your brain up. Go ahead and do that. I call that a reboot. If you're overthinking too much, shut your eyes and hit your jaw and just see a dark screen. Just, just clear your mind. No future, no past, and, and just listen to my voice. And this is guided imagery. I want you to go right now to the final table. I want you to sit down right this second in your mind at the final table. And you may or may not see a logo behind you of the event. And if you can see that, put that on the wall. See it. If it's on the table, that logo, well, put it on the table where you're playing. See people there. See the chips. Now, it's over. You've won. And see how everyone is reacting to you shaking your hand, and see the next day how you feel, and see how people are now treating you differently, they're definitely taking you very seriously, it's not the same, and you need to see that, this is called aftermath imagery, where you go past it, now open your eyes, so the first thing you want to do, I have a B to A principle, I'm going to give you some other little tips, but the B to A principle is to go to B. But B's not really the final table. B's winning. And B's seeing what happens after winning. So B is really a day after the event when everybody's responding all over the country going, you know, congratulations. And how's, how are people changed toward you? That's B. So what date would that, would that happen? Give me a date. Uh, like, so the, the tournament starts on Tuesday the um, 1st, and would end. the first tournament would end on July 3rd. Okay, and then... And then I start the, July 4th through the 6th for the next tournament. Six. So you need to go to July 7th. What has happened on the July 7th? Well, you have the potential to win both events. You've you got to get that in your mind back-to-back -back events. And, and see, we make excuses right there. Well, you know, I really don't need to win the first one to win the second one. And I'll take this, I'll take that. Well, that's mental slotting, where we slot ourselves into where we're going to be. And then when we get there, the subconscious says, well, we can't go further because this is all you wanted, so I'm going to have you lose and not go further. I've helped people get to the finals of an event, a major tennis event, a French Open event, and he had opportunities to win it, but the subconscious says, no, our goal was just to get to the finals, and the brakes were on subconsciously. It's crazy how that works. So this is the first place to start, and that's to use the B to A principle to help you get disciplined. Then we back up. Uh, July, where are we, July 8th or 7th? 7th, 7th yeah. And then the 6th, the 5th, the 4th, the 3rd, all the way back up to this moment. And what that does, Jonathan, that illuminates a pathway like a runway at your airport at night. And you can see it. And then you need to walk on that as if it's so. So one of the first things you need to do is learn how to get big. And let's talk about confidence. One of the tools is called the light switch. So shut your eyes and drop your chin down to your chest. 
And this is something I'm only ha- going to have you do one time. I want you to see yourself losing. And everybody says, oh my gosh, Jim, what, what are you doing? All right, now keep that thought. Now raise your head up above parallel. Losing. Back down to your chest. Losing. Back up. Losing. And head back down. Losing. Now open your eyes. Now 75% of the people that do something like that, and, and what you think is up to you, it can be something very negative. It's definitely personal. 75% report when your head went up, you couldn't see losing. And you had to reconstruct it to make it happen. But when you dropped your head, it's very, very prevalent. So like a light switch, when something negative happens in this tournament, raise your chin above parallel. And, and if you need to make a decision on something, if you look up to the right, you'll get a little more creative. Just a little bit to the right. It, it's not a tell. And they may think it's a tell. That, that's, that's up to them. Maybe, good, maybe they think it's a tell. But that's where you're looking for a solution. And you can do that not just during a while at the table. You can do this anytime. But the main thing is to have your head up. Now, if you want to give a fake tell, drop your head. Now they think you've got a bad hand. They may go all in. Hmm. The head up. Now, to get big, this is something I would do maybe between uh, when you have a short break, uh, when you can actually stand up. If you stand up, and right now I want you to sit as tall as possible. I want you to put your arms out and try to fill the room up with all your body. So put both arms out. They are. (laughs) Yeah, they are. Okay. And chin up. And just get as big as you possibly can. Fill the room with every bit of you. All right, now look back at me. Just that, getting big, that's what an animal does in the wild. Even a little chipmunk, a rabbit, if they're cornered, They get big. A bear tries to get as big as possible for intimidation. But really what happens, even with an animal, especially with uh, with, uh, with you and I and everyone watching, is that chemicals change, endorphins go into the bloodstream, and you have a feeling of confidence. So getting big is a tool for instant confidence. Chin up, that's a definite tool for being solution-oriented. And you need to make up your mind. Nobody drops your chin unless you want to give a tell. Right. I like that. Now, go ahead. I, I uh, one thing that one of the three thousand thoughts that go around my mind uh, when I get into these tournaments is uh, superstition and luck. Um, and uh, for example, I'm wearing my uh, Joe Morgan jersey that I wore on day two of my World Series of Poker. And I think about, well, should I be wearing the same outfits and should I be sitting at the, the same uh, uh, places uh, and drinking the same drinks? Is, all the, is that all BS or well, does that, some of that stuff help? Uh, it's not necessary, but it helps. And really all you're doing is you're creating routines and routines give you confidence. So there, there is a difference between a superstition and a routine. I had one baseball player... Uh, that came to me, and I counted 111 superstitions. And what was the sacrifice chickens before the in the in the locker room? But it was close, <laughs> and and so we shed all of those and got it down to routines. So I, I think you need to abandon the word superstitions. I, I think it's unnecessary. And then if somebody breaks a superstition, it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, where's my jersey? Someone took my jersey. I'm, I'm done. And, and so you don't want to get caught into that. What you do need to have are pre-performance routines, performance routines, but you also want to have post-performance routines. Um, pre-performance routines are the following. If you go B to A, when you 
actually start uh, the first hand. Uh, prior to that, one of the things I want you to do is reboot or clear the launch. It's the same tool you did that at the beginning. You unhinge your jaw, which relaxes all your body, not just your jaw. That's kind of a linchpin. With your jaw unhinged, you'll relax your hands. You relax your shoulders. With your jaw tense and chewing on one side or the other, if I know you're nervous, you'll chew on that little piece of skin on the left side of your, uh, inside of your mouth. That means you're not, uh, you're very uncomfortable with the hand that you have. If you start chewing on the right side, you're uncomfortable about making your next move, the size of the bed, or whether you need to fold or not. That's a tell. I, I know where you are, but one thing I know, you're not comfortable. And, and, and some people struggle to mask that, but you want to clear your mind completely before the event. The other thing you want to do is train yourself. Right now, Jonathan, you have probably 17 to 20 breaths in a minute. Right this second. Everybody watching has 17 to 20 breaths per minute. Now, if you get a little stressed, you'll, you'll take a little more breaths per minute. You can get into the 20, goodness gracious, hopefully not 30 breaths a minute. Now you, that enters panic mode. And you want to get your breathing to 6 to 8 breaths a minute. And if I timed you right now, and you can time yourself, and just count your breaths. How many breaths do you have in a minute? If you could get your breathing, and let's just take it about six or seven deep breaths right now. Real long inhale. Go ahead. Long exhale. And just start a little rhythm of long inhale, long exhale. right now, Jonathan, because the event's going to happen, you'll have a dump of cortisol, a stressor, which helps you narrow your focus. But you need to cut that chemical with serotonin because the zone is a purposeful calm. So one of the routines that's crucial, clear your mind, get your breathing down to six to eight breaths. That's before taking a test. Uh, before a big sales presentation, definitely before uh, some type of an event like this where the competition is ferocious and there's a lot of unknowns. The routines come in play because the man with the most constants in a game of variables will prevail. Routines give you constants. So, if you're not sure what to do, you know, I've got my 90-second rule, and I've actually got a five-second rule. After the hand is played and you've won it or you've lost it, I would apply the five-second rule. If you're elated and ecstatic and woohoo, hopefully that's on the seventh. It's not after one hand. I don't care how much you won because you don't want to celebrate to the point where you go back and relive it because now you've broken the zone that got you to win that fight. And that's how you thread pots in a row. Right. And that's how you run tables and get rid of guys. So the five-second rule is a routine after every hand and after every pot. After that five seconds, I wouldn't think about anything. I'd clear my mind. I, I wouldn't high five. I would. I'd just be cool. And all you want to do is think next. Where's my next thought going to be? Well, it's going to be on the, you know, the next deal, the next hand. We're trying to thread hands over hands over tables over hours over days. So the five second rule is in place to thread those present tense moments together. Um, hydration. Hydration begins the night before. If you lose 
1% of your body water weight, you will lose 10% of your concentration. And most poker players are dehydrated. And if you're drinking alcohol, and some do, I'm not sure why, you'll dehydrate yourself even more. And if you drink coffee to stay awake, well, you're going to dehydrate even more. You may get a little jolt, but you will eventually lose focus. You're going to make a mistake. And the biggest mistake you can make is not listening to your intuition. That'll be the biggest mistake you'll make. If anybody makes a major mistake, that's the one they're going to make in an event like this where there's a lot of pressure. So let's walk through the tools. First of all, I'd get a great night's sleep starting tonight. You need to go to bed, seeing yourself winning. That puts you to bed, that wakes you up. So that's tonight. That's seven, eight straight days of seeing yourself winning. It starts tonight. Not reaching the final table. I mean, if you're going to do it, there's no rules here. Let's get the brakes on. Do it. Yeah. Why, why are you putting the brakes on? Cut down the safety net. Good fortune favors the bowl. Go for it. So when you go to bed tonight, now the last 30 minutes before you go to sleep, whatever you think, even if it's bad, the subconscious records it and will replay it up to 20 times during the night. So if you think, man, I'm not ready for this tournament, that's replayed 15 to 20 times. Now, if you do that seven days in a row, that puts stress on the subconscious mind, which controls all your body language, all your faculties of your body, and all those chemicals that make the zone. If you do it seven days in a row, whether it's good or bad, your subconscious will do everything to manifest itself into its physical equivalent. It will even get you to fold. Now, listen to how uncanny this can be. It may get you to fold twice when maybe you'd have gone in just so that you can get cards later to win the biggest pot and win the tournament. Don't forget, your subconscious is the world's greatest chemist of your body uh, uh, chemicals. Mathematician, you don't think it can count cards? Right now, it can repair cells. Come on, it can count cards. It can repair cells. It can get your body uh, to go in remission with cancer. I had cancer. No one knew about it. You don't know about it. I never told anybody about it. I never mentioned the C word. And I started, at, in this 30 minutes before sleep, I didn't see me with cancer. I saw me healthy, vibrant, and awesome. And the C word was never mentioned. The only person that even knew was my wife, and the only reason she knew is she drove me to the hospital. Or I wouldn't have told her. The Cardinal Bernadine, but... After 30 days, I came back, and the, he's looking at my face. I, I had to have it operated on. He said it was very serious, wrapped around a nerve. After 30 days of me doing this visualization, no trace of it. It's not returned. That's been 15 years ago. No. So, if the body can do that, it can count cards. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's child's play, sandbox stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, grade school stuff. Yeah. You have to believe that your body has that capability. And you need to tear down all barriers and all safety nets. Well, I don't play all the time. You know, if this is only part-time, there's pros there. You know, that's a bunch of garbage. Yeah. You get into that thinking, you, you might as well just phone in your entry and not show up and forget about it. So, at night tonight and every night, Go to bed seeing yourself winning. Wake up in the morning. Don't go to the bathroom. You lay there for just a couple of seconds. See yourself winning. You're transitioning in and out of a, what's called an alpha state and to program yourself for success. Unfortunately, we unwittingly program, program ourselves for failure. We do that all the time. All of us since birth, unfortunately. That's why I've been in business for all, over 40 years. 
Now, the other routines that that you need, uh, I would practice some scenarios of where you're going to go in and where you're not going to go in with this hand so that you know the odds on you winning with what's on the table, with what's in your hand. And I, I would go through a couple of those different scenarios, and I know they're infinite, but there's some basic scenarios that you need to just not think about. You know what to do. Uh, is it possible for you to do that? No. Can you make a list of some of those typical uh, scenarios, yeah. those borderline scenarios? And, and that's one other thing I would do, and then I would forget about it, not even think about it at all, uh, right before the 30 minutes before the tournament, uh, even the day of the tournament, you're not thinking about anything. You're not thinking about winning. You're not thinking about playing cards. You're just uh, being you, yeah. being, being normal. Can you be normal in an abnormal situation? Although you're going to think abnormal because you're going to be thinking less. The best in the world have won before they've entered this event. I'm, I'm telling you, if I could do a printout of every person at your table and the surrounding tables, a printout of their thoughts that day, I can tell you who's going to win or lose. Right. I, I'll be able to narrow it down to two or three people. And then you know, luck will happen. But let's talk about luck. You're, you're wearing that Reds jersey for luck. The only luck you need is really the future created by your subconscious, getting you to fold, getting other people to fold when maybe they should go in, getting other people to go in when they should fold. How does that happen? You know, if you were playing all these hands by yourself, you wouldn't make any mistakes. know what to do. But now we've added other people and we think we need to do more than we need to do because, oh, I'm at the final table. These guys are great. So I need to do more than I need to do. That's not true. In poker, people lose and there's one guy standing. Let them lose. Right. And that's just playing the basics and not overthinking it and listening to your intuition. So I do want you to hydrate. Now the other thing, I would I would be eating something every two hours at, during the event. Something. Some nuts, a little bit of protein every two hours. Uh, holding, going to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> okay? Don't, don't hold it. Yeah. If you got to go, you got to go. Right. If you hold it, it takes energy to hold it, and that's energy that's not on the task at right. hand. So, uh, I think detachment of the end result once you've programmed it, I think that's the key. And here's one more thing you need to really clean up. Your inner dialogue. I've got clients who I've told them, right up front. If I talk to you the way you talk to you, you'd fire my ass. <laughs> That's right. You know, you'd fire me. So, you've got to be careful and think about what you think about. I think the most powerful thing you can do is positive I statements. These are just positive affirmations. I'm a winner. I'm a champion. I know what to do. I'm an expert. I know how to make you lose. Those are positive affirmations. Yeah. Uh, I'm a percentage player. And um, you just need to be very careful about setting yourself up between now and then. And you're a prime candidate to set yourself up for failure yeah. because this is not a full-time thing. And right off the bat, you can say, well, you know, I, I don't play all the time. You know, I'm not as sharp as these guys. I mean, you're just talking yourself out of the final table. And winning, you've got no shot. Zero. So 
Think about what you think about and listen to your inner dialogue. So uh, are, are you going to do pretty well this, uh, this, this coming trip? I'm bringing home two bracelets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that, that's where you go. Yeah. And, and you've got to sell you on you. Yeah. That what you have is enough. Now, what's the essence of this art of poker? What, what do you believe the essence is? Can you boil the essence of this game down, maybe even for a non-poker uh, player? Oh, I guess just trust in my intuition. And, uh, and, uh, Let, let's, let's talk cards. Oh. Uh, the goal is to have the best hand, straights, pairs, three of a kind, four of a kind, high card, Whoever has the best hands, or whoever believes that the other guy has the best hand, will prevail. So, how big a deal is bluffing? It's a huge big deal. deal. Oh, yeah. How big a deal is folding? We do a whole lot of that. Well, every great poker player will fold 60 plus percent or higher. I've seen players fold 72-73% of their hands. Yeah. Or the amateur is like, I, I'm here to play, I'm not here to sit out. It's like, wait a minute. I'm and, here to win. That's it, yeah. And, and it's not about winning. It's about getting everybody at the table to lose. Right. I, I want you to bet more than your hand is worth. That's my goal. Yeah. So I can pick your pocket from it, right. of your money. I want you to have the confidence that what you have is good when you actually don't have that good hand. Right. So with a clear mind, with 1,400 thoughts the day of the tournament, intuition will be there. Now, if you have more than 2,000 thoughts, uh, you're going to be grinding it out like 80% of the people at the tables. Uh, using your experience, uh, thinking like a little victim sometimes, thinking like a judge, winning some, and you will need the luck of the hand to pull you through. And uh, you don't need luck to do this. Your subconscious can make that happen. It is the only entity that has the ability to think eight, nine hands in advance. It has the uncanny ability to tell a person not to get in that car. Not because something bad's going to happen, because I may miss an opportunity right. to meet somebody. Right. So it's not always a negative thing. Yeah. It, it could be an opportunity thing. And uh, it depends on how you're programmed. And right now, between now and uh, the end of this tournament, you, you need to have positive self-talk, sell you on you. Uh, get your routines in place. Um, hydrate, eat, and reboot a lot. And you can reboot between hands. Uh, that only takes five or ten seconds. Yeah. To clear your mind. And your battle cry word is what? Uh, bracelet. Yeah. Next. 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 Yeah. Next hand. Yeah. Next. Just keep pushing the next hand. Yeah. Well, terrific. Uh, thank you so much, Jim Fannin. And uh, you'll see below this video links to uh, Jim's books and his websites. And it uh, comes highly recommended both for me and my, uh, my daughter, the championship tennis player. Thanks, Jim. Make it happen. Get in the zone. Talk to you later.